Hi everyone, I'm going to walk through today a little bit of a demonstration on this really amazing hardware solution to being able to do filming, uh, which is the ATEM Mini Pro, and it's allowing me to basically set up my own little personal studio, which is actually a very cost-effective, it's cheap, it's portable, easy to use, and in some sense it replaces what we've been doing here at the University of Washington with our light boards, which uh, require a studio, uh, and so much more space, much more expense, but ATEM has been developing these products and they're quite remarkable in terms of what they are actually offering for flexibility. So uh, what I wanted to walk through is how you can use this software and hardware, and I'm gonna walk through the whole setup of it, but you can integrate it, for instance, with your iPad, for instance, and this is what I actually am showing you right here, what you're seeing are slides on my iPad. Uh, so for instance, I can either show slides on my iPad, or I can switch over to software that would be on the iPad. For instance, I could say I'm gonna start thinking about solving differential equations, and these might have some flow trajectories, and you wanna to try to find a solution to this. So you can see what I'm doing here is I'm actually using my iPad, so instead of having a light board to write on, I just write directly on my iPad, one of the big advantages of the iPad, right, is uh, unlike the light board, which is pretty costly in terms of erasing things, here I can just simply erase. So it's very easy to integrate the writing structures and there is a ton of uh, different uh, writing programs uh, and graphic programs available on the iPad for you to use. Uh, here, this is just a basic one that came with, with the iPad. Um, so you could use it. Uh, and you can erase it, you can even save things easily with it. The main thing is that you have a black background and it's uh, basically a mixture of your iPad with the video stream that you're seeing here. So if I come back to my keynote here, so here I go. So integration with the iPad allows me to switch over to these software solutions where I can just simply write on the screen like I would in a normal classroom, or I can even give Talk slides. So here is a, a normal slide deck that I might use in a research talk. Uh, this is just slides that I have. All I've done with my slides is I've moved everything over on the slide so I have a little space to talk in, which is where I'm centered currently, and all the action is happening on the left. The nice thing about this integration uh, is that the iPad also allows you to have a pointer. So for instance, I could say I want to solve this system. I have f of X here, so for instance, this is a, a little laser pointer directly on the iPad, or I can even write on this thing and annotate. So for instance, I can annotate and say, I want to think about this as being alpha. So for instance, you can annotate over the slides. You can just use, in fact, Keynote here is what I'm actually presenting on uh, this, and you can annotate anything you want on it. So it's a really nice way to use these and again, show really nice slides where I've just, the slides have a black background, I've moved everything over on the slide to the right hand side, and then I have a place here to talk and I can point over to the pieces of the slide, for instance, this graphic and so forth. And again, you can easily annotate on these with, any, with a bunch of different color pins where you can say, here's my solution. So, different possibilities here. So that is with the iPad. I can also integrate it with my laptop. So what I'm hooking it up with is both my iPad and my laptop. So for instance, what I'm gonna show you here is I can come over and actually just switch over to cameras. And now what you're seeing is my laptop. And I'm gonna come back to this in a moment, but if I wanted to, I could just bring up coding right here. For instance, I can bring up a MATLAB right here, and so I can actually program directly on my laptop here and demonstrate code live as I'm programming. So I've made a black background with my MATLAB. Here it is, and now you can see some code structure here. So you see I can basically code up anything I want, run codes here, and so it allows me a great deal of flexibility in terms of talking through code, live programming directly on this, here and so again this is now sharing directly from my laptop versus my iPad and it gives me a great bit of flexibility. I have also can do Python notebooks in here, Jupyter notebooks, these kind of things directly here. Okay, 
So that is the integration with my laptop. And let me come back to my iPad here where I'm running slides. And I want to show you how to set this up because it's actually pretty easy. I mean, actually, it took me a little bit of time to figure out all the components that need to be put together. But hopefully after this video, you'll be able to set it up in, a, in short order and be uh, in business right away. So making all this work is the A10 Mini Pro. So the A10 Mini Pro is a fantastic product. It's really an amazing uh, piece of equipment. And here it is. Here's a picture of it. Uh, this is a small device. It's, uh, it's, it's actually pretty cheap, but it's got a lot of different functionalities and features. Now, the way I'm using it here for education, I've not seen this done anywhere online. Uh, most people use some of the functionality here where you can cut to different video streams, put picture in, picture in picture, these kind of things. All of that's allowed here for use, but I'm using it with the software that goes along with the A10 Mini Pro in order to sort of create uh, an educational structure where we can integrate different data streams in a nice way. This thing's about 495 bucks. So this is, uh, this is your cost to getting going with your own studio. And this thing here is probably about uh, maybe 10 inches wide by uh, four inches across, something like that. So it's a pretty small compact device. And from this, I'm running everything that I'm showing you here. In fact, I'm gonna show you explicitly how to hook everything up. So first of all, let me walk through the board. Those first four buttons, one, two, three, four, those are the inputs. And these are either uh, video inputs, uh, camera inputs, uh, laptop, iPads, all these can come in and I can take up to four inputs that would come in to the A10 Mini Pro. Okay, and I actually typically only use three and I'll show you the three I use and that gives you a, a great deal of flexibility, but you have the option of using up to four. So when the lights lit there, it says right now, this it would tell you that everything's coming through uh, the first input. The first input in this case would be a camera. So this is not a live shot, but it just shows you which one. And if I were to push any of the other buttons there, it would just simply switch over to whatever that data stream is. And mostly the way I'm using this is actually this ATEM software I'm gonna show you in a moment allows you to mix different input streams. So what you're seeing right now is a mix between my iPad keynote presentation and the camera that's your, that I'm looking at right now. So that's the mix. It's about a 50-50 mix of the two and it's integrated in this way and um, this is the board that allows that integration to happen. By the way, a lot of picture in picture options here that you can just switch between. You can have multiple video feeds, multiple data feeds, and then you can do picture in, pic, uh, picture in picture, however you want to configure it. In fact, right up there at the top, right, you see that uh, right here gives you these options, right? You can have it in the top right, bottom right. So these are all the options you have available to you about picture in picture. Uh, and then finally, here's the, there's a lot more to go through on this board, but really I'm just gonna show you the way I'm using it. And so you, there's gonna be, but once you have this, you, you can learn a lot about how to use these different functionalities. But once you get things set up, you just hit the record button and you're really, really good to go. So by the way, do not get the A10 Mini. The A10 Mini does not allow you to record. The A10 Mini Pro allows you to record. So if you can't record, you would need one other device off of this that would actually take in the data stream and record locally. So here, what I'm gonna show you is this thing here, once I hit record, it records it right to a hard drive and then I can post process that uh, for, for lectures and use later. So I originally bought the A10 Mini not knowing that I couldn't record on it. And then so as soon as I figured that out, I just switched it out to the A10 Mini Pro, which allows you to record. So uh, don't make the same mistake I did, just get yourself the A10 Mini Pro. Um, importantly, here's what the back looks like. So we take this A10 Mini Pro, here's the back. Uh, it's got four, the, you know, the four ports are right there. There they are across the bottom of this thing. In fact, I'm gonna walk through each one of these ports to show you what it does. So the first hookup that I make here is port one. These are all HDMI ports, by the way. The first one goes out to the camera. So uh, almost every modern camera will have the ability to take HDMI. You don't even need a camera. You could just hook this into your, your smartphone, for instance, uh, the 
iPhones are incredibly power in their in their in their cameras, and you could just hook it into a camera from your iPhone or your iPad. Uh, and here, what I'm actually using is uh, is a nice camera that has an H HDMI output to it, and so I run that directly into this port here. Okay, so that's the camera you're seeing me talking to right now. By the way, uh, the important thing is that this port sets the resolution throughout. So what I have here is a camera that can go up to 4K, so it basically allows all the filming to be at the highest resolution possible. So just keep that in mind that you want your best resolution device right at the beginning port, right up front. So I have a camera on that one. The second port is my iPad. So my iPad that I'm drawing on right now is uh, an HDMI cable and then I have of course uh, uh, this this actually goes from HDMI to a USB-C uh, output and that here runs right out of here as HDMI into my iPad as a USB-C and then here here we go so I'm actually drawing on my and running slides on my iPad and that's coming from port 2 and in fact what you're actually seeing right now is a mix of port 1 and port 2 so it's about a 50-50 mix. I have the camera right there, my iPad, that's the mix. And so this is what's allowing me to create the presentations I want because everything's being driven from my iPad. Or I could switch over to my laptop and program directly here, put all my code right here, and again, it's another mix. So my input three goes right to that, which is the laptop. So I actually have my Mac running off import three. So when I want to actually switch over and program live, I can do that directly here through import number three. So this again, this is a VGA cable, uh, HDMI cable that runs right out of this device. And then of course you have a dongle to take it into your, uh, into your Mac, for instance. So those are the three inputs I use, uh, a camera, iPad, and my laptop. And so with those, uh, with the camera, it's just filming. So I'm talking to the camera. With the iPad, this is where I'm running slides I am um, drawing or doing my normal lecture that I would do on the light board. And then with the laptop, I would do, be doing live programming. So again, what you wanna do with your laptop is set up a black background and then also set up your, your programming structure with a black background, makes it look pretty nice when you start to program, okay? So those are the inputs. And then the other things we wanna do now is the other, uh, the other outputs here these are actually gonna be things that are gonna be important for the back end for processing and collecting the data. So let me walk through these. So in addition to running HDMI out to my laptop, I also run ethernet cable out. So Apple sells a little dongle that will allow ethernet cables to go into a USB port, which then you can run it through the dongle into your, into your uh, laptop. So this ethernet port is very different than this HDMI port. The HDMI is basically an input to my mixing or my data streams, but the Ethernet port is actually a signal that's coming from my laptop that allows my laptop to actually control the A10 Mini Pro. And I'm going to show that piece of software in a minute, so that's an important thing. So my laptop is hooked up in two ways to this device, through HDMI and through the Ethernet cable. And that allows me now, with my laptop, to control my data streams, which are these three inputs that I can actually just manipulate as I wish which data stream to come in. Of course, I can do this directly on the device, but the way I'm using it, I'm always mixing these data streams. Usually it's a 50-50 combo of them. And so what I need to have to, is the flexibility to be able to figure out which two data streams I'm mixing, which the A10 Mini Pro only allows me to pick one or the other. So this piece of software is really important for us as we develop out what we're seeing here. So what else do we need here? The other thing we need here is, in fact, to the output port, you just put in some kind of uh, hard drive. So, you know, you can get these at Costco. They're pretty cheap. This is a terabyte scan disk drive. Um, it's just a, it's a USB-C cable that runs out of here. And this is what's going to record. So when you hit record on your AT Mini Pro, it's just going to run everything right into here and it's going to save it there in a really high resolution format. For instance, with the camera I have here, 4K, you'll save it in 4K. Um, so you can have really high quality video 
um, just based upon the equipment you have. And again, you don't have to save it in 4K. You can have lesser quality uh, pieces because you're going to actually maybe put this on YouTube. And YouTube, uh, of course, unless people have very high bandwidth, won't you know people won't usually get it in full 4K. But that's what you're going to run out here. USB out. This is going to save everything. So when you hit record, just takes all these data streams that are controlled from your laptop and Ethernet and it's going to basically mix them in the way that you want to produce the output. Now in order for you to kind of see how you're doing with this and see how the integration works, there's one last piece here which is on the HDMI out, this, this little port here, I actually have a little 7 inch H, you know, HDMI run screen that's actually right in front of the camera. So I can look at that camera and see what the integration looks like. So it's a, in other words, it's for me to be able to see how does the data integration streams between, let's say, the camera and my iPad and the camera and my laptop look. I have this running to a screen, which I'm looking at right below the camera there, so I can get immediate feedback on how that looks. So that's, a, that's an important piece to have because you can actually see what's going to be recorded out to this hard drive. Okay, so that's the setup. So you need these components. Most people have a camera. You can, like I said, you can use your, your iPhone. A lot of us have iPads. Uh, this little HDMI, you can just run it actually any, actually any screen will work as well. I use like, I like to have a small screen because it's small and I can put it right under the camera uh, because then I can look in that direction and see what I'm trying to record. Um, and that's it. So again, the machine itself, the ATM Mini Pro is about $500. Uh, and then a lot of these components, many of us have just because we have them already. And so you can kind of put together your entire, entire studio around this hardware component connected into all of your devices. Okay, so everything in again is run just HDMI or USB-C. That's it. So super simple setups. And like I said, I have it here set up. I can just take it down and put it back up very easily. I've been filming in my office or in my home uh, because this just doesn't take up very much space and I can close it all down and bring it all back up very, very quickly. Okay, let's turn our attention now to the software. So this is the hardware piece of this, but the A10 Mini Pro has a critical piece of software that you want to download onto your laptop so that you can actually run all of this software. Okay, so First, to get it, you would go to blackmagicdesign.com. That's the maker of the A10 Mini Pro. And so you can go to their website and look at their product family. And the thing you want to highlight, I want to highlight for you here, is you want to actually select here the A10 Live production. Okay, so once you've highlighted this, what it will do is give you on the bottom left some of the software you can download. And what you want to download here is A10 Switchers Upgrade. So you just come here whether you're a Mac or a PC, you just download this software and install it. And what this is, is the A10 Mini Pro controller software. So once I have the Ethernet cable running out of the A10 Mini Pro out into my laptop, I can actually control everything from the laptop with this uh, nice piece of software. So in fact, let me show you what it looks like. I'm gonna switch over here so that you're seeing now the integration of my camera with uh, my laptop. So here's this ATEM software control. So the interesting thing here is if you look right here, right, these are my four cameras or my four inputs. They call them cameras, but really my inputs are the camera, the iPad, my laptop. I only have three inputs to this. Uh, important features of this software. One, is that what I'm allowed to do here, I can switch back to my iPad by hitting here, camera two. Now I'm back to my iPad. Camera three is my laptop. Camera one is actually what you're seeing right now. So I just leave that on camera one, camera two, and then camera three. So right now what you're seeing is camera one and camera three, and this bar over here is really important. This bar here is set about, it tells me the mix between those two cameras. Right now I usually set it at 50-50, if I go in this direction, it becomes all laptop. If I go the other direction, it's all camera. And so I can just toggle the mix I like. And usually about a 50-50 mix is what you want there. And then I'm, uh, I'm set to go. And in fact, right now you can see I'm recording. 
right over on the far left over there, I've hit the record button so it says I'm recording. Um, on the bottom, you have some important diagnostics, including audio. And the audio I'm using here, if I look at the audio, I have to turn this on. This is the audio of the, from the camera I have. It has actually a microphone that's pretty nice. So I just, I have camera one has a microphone, I turn it on. Um, the A10 Mini Pro actually allows you up to two mics in there. So you can actually just, if you have a nice mic, you can just hook it directly into the back of that as one of the data streams that comes in. But the important thing is when you're on the software here, you want to make sure that when you do this, that the master volume is actually working. So you want to make sure to turn on the mics so that you're actually capturing all of the sound. So this just is a sanity check here. I have camera one. See, I have a, can pull in a cam, uh, I can pull in the mic from camera one. I could pull in a, the mic from camera two or camera three, which would be the laptop or the iPad, but I'm just using the camera here because it has a, a nice mic with it. So let's go back to the switcher. So this is the software control that you want to sort of think about integrating. And again, when you start this, the filming phase, you want to basically step this up so that you're mixing signals between data streams. And again, right now it's laptop camera. And if I switch over here to camera two, I am back with the camera and I'm back here mixing my iPad, which I'm currently on a keynote slides with my camera right there. So that's pretty much it. That gives you all of the components, all the hardware, software, how to set them up. There are a couple other key features that you want to might look at, um, including the lighting, the background, and the mics. So I already said that the A10 Mini Pro has up to two mics on the back of it. I don't have any of these mics, uh, but you can easily hook one up. You just want to make sure on the A10 controller that you're getting that live signal from the mics, um, but this will allow you to have up to the two mics. So you could have a very high quality mic that you put somewhere around here that would record. Uh, again, I'm just doing recording right off of the camera. Background, I just have a black sheet back here. So I just put this back here and uh, because remember, all of this is gonna be mixing. So whether it's PowerPoint slides, keynote slides, or, map, uh, or your laptop, you want black background so it doesn't create any problem with the mixing. And so here with the camera, I have a black background, so when it mixes with the slides and other things, uh, it doesn't, the rest of my film or camera angle doesn't mix with the rest that's in, in whether it's the iPad or the laptop. So background, just black cloth is what I have. Uh, you can put in mics. And finally, for lighting, this is actually important. I'm not sure if I've gotten all the lighting perfect, but you know, what I've done with the lighting is I just bought one of these ring lights. Uh, they're pretty cheap, uh, about a hundred dollars and it come with a stand and notice even with this stand here, right? So you have the stand, you have the ring light and a lot of people can just, there's usually a camera mount on it. In fact, that's what I have here is right on my ring light, which is here. That's where I put the camera and also I've attached my HDMI little screen so I can look at the camera as well as see what the mixing is happening uh, there. So everything for me is happening right back here with my cameras and my little video screen uh, that I just hook up into my system. And uh, yeah, so all the influencers have these. So I'm like uh, Justin Bieber Lake at this point, influencing people. Uh, these are not the droids you are looking for. No? Okay, it's all right. So anyway, that's it. That's kind of the, uh, that's a, a new version of this light board. You see it has tons of flexibility and it's portable. Like I can take this whole shop and I could actually, um, well, except for the ring light, but the ring light is just nicer lighting, but almost everything here, I could actually just carry in a little backpack around with me, my whole studio. Of course, the black background here and the lighting, those are the two that aren't quite as portable, but you know, I just drape this black background down, I film and I can take it right back up pretty easily. And this is a very cheap solution, low cost, right? This A10 Mini Pro is about $500. And then if you, a lot of us have a lot of the components already. And so it's, uh, uh, that's pretty much the cost, except for maybe uh, a ring light. And, um, and then once you have these things, you can, you know, really under a thousand dollars, very nicely have a, a pretty great studio set up for yourself to film.